So hi, Giovanni. Hi. We are here in uh, Frat Tools in the bungalow door, right? Yeah. So um, you've got a new filter, right? Right. It's the Kunsa. It's a quadruple analog multimode resonant filter with a series of semi-normalizations that allow you to use, as, uh, allow you to use it as uh, double stereo or uh, single quadruple or quadruple mono, whatever you, you need. And there is, mm, there is a very open architecture that doesn't force you to certain design choices. Okay, so um, is the filter kind of based on any like existing uh, circuits or is it your own kind of design? No, it's our own kind of design and uh, especially for this parameter here labeled C, which is the character knob, because uh, uh, the we had two main features in mind when designing this feature, this, uh, this filter. The first one was that it didn't have to lose the bass at high Q resonance setting and the other one was that it had to have a lot of character, like something easily recognizable. And so we dealt with them, with, uh, and the result w is those two knobs, each one resolving a specific issue. So the Q knob allowed you to uh, have a very high resonance setting without losing any, any bass sound, especially, in, of course, in low-pass filter mode, even though you have also the bandpass and the high-pass. Everything is 12 dB per octave, except for the low-pass that can be selected 12 and 24. But really, the character is uh, what uh, strikes the most about this filter, and th that's the most unique part of the filter. Basically, when it is all the way to the left, you see there is a very squ like a squared sine wave and it means that the filter is responding to an overload signal in a certain way and it is uh, somehow taming the input signal and forcing it to a soft clip version. So you have always a very controlled signal going through the circuit which provides a very uh, clean and whistling cue. Uh, if you rotate the knob to the right, as you rotate it, you remove those, uh, let's say, safety precautions and uh, you let the sound free to overload the circuit and, and make it scream. So while we were deciding which character should the filter have for distortion, we then said, why just one character? And so we implemented a knob so that you can have all these characters okay. you want. So should we uh, should we hear some of it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And we can get a taste so of what these kind of uh, functions mean. Yeah, sure. So I will start with filter number one, low pass filter, and patch here to our CGM input number one, and I'm gonna sweep it in. Now we have no no cue, no uh, other characters apart from the soft clip that I was mentioning before. So even if I drive the signal a bit, you see that it stays well put. And if I add some resonance, you see that it is very clean even if I am past unity gain at the input. If I reduce the input gain through the VCA here, I can have a very liquid and clear sine wave on top of my sound, which can be also ap uh, appreciated in the low pass 12 uh, dB and band pass and high pass. But as soon as I, let's go back to the low pass, as soon as I increase, I'm gonna turn the volume down, as soon as I increase the character knob. Wow, yeah, that's a lot of uh, mm -hmm. kind of and weirdness going yeah. on. Yeah. Because now we are really overloading the circuit. And I can drive it even more from the input. You see that by combining these three parameters here, you can have a really lot of different flavors across this filter here. And the same is true also for the bandpass filter, which I think is really. And in this patch here, I am already controlling the filter through the volt per octave signal. That is a copy of my melody volt per octave, but I can remove it. But as you can see, if I keep it, I can really use the filter as a harmonic reinforcement tool through the saturation and the 
the the Q settings. And another cool feature of this filter design is the ping circuit, which allows us to uh, send uh, any kind of signal. Right now we are using a uh, uh, very sharp and short gate from the Usta sequencer and patch it to this input down here and it allows us to create those very natural decay curves that can affect uh, the frequency retain it is uh, DC coupled so it retains the legate length information or through this switch here use it also to affect the input VCA and you can see that the input knob now flashes up and down because we are actually ducking it along with the filter frequency to achieve a very natural and organic decay. And uh, this is just filter number one, but in this patch here I cross-faded filter one and three and fed them with two different sound sources. And combine them like this with a mono crossfade but I can also use those other two filters which uh, thanks to the semi normalization are already receiving the signal from oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 and you set them and uh, listen to their bandpass filter output like this in a sort of stereo So if I combine those two a wide variety of uh, um, specialization effects, so to speak. And of course, the final part of this semi uh, of this leftmost section is that we have uh, the a built-in analog mixing stage that provides us uh, uh, four kinds of sound signal. We have uh, a couple of filters, one and two right here, we have filters three and four right here, and we have filters one, two, three and four from here, as well as a dry output. So if we listen to this output here, and patch it for example to this uh, spare channel here, we are listening to those two filters only, and we can define the relative amplitude and we can also overload the output stage like this and you can see that the bandpass filter here gets automatically docked because it is overloading but we can also listen to outputs uh, 3 and 4 and we can patch them in stereo like one on the left and the other on the right channel like hard panned the two melodies and finally we can listen to the four filters at once in a straight mono kind of thing which might become very useful in case you want to process one sound through four filters at the same time like this and for example you can set the filter as low pass bandpass, bandpass, and high pass, perhaps with similar Q and color settings, like this. Like this. And uh, we can use, uh, for example, an external source like uh, a DC offset coming from the 3 to one patch to the volt per octave input, and sweep four filters at the same time How does that sound like? So if we took it uh, left and right, but we've got one source coming into left oh, and right, and then yeah. we have different offsets. Let's try. We can have this one. I think that it might work. We can have different options. For example, right now we have low pass and band pass here, and uh, band pass and high pass here. So it might sound quite unbalanced. But it gives that like kind of nice stereo movement. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Or we can also send the two couples to the same settings. So low pass and uh, high pass, low pass and high pass, but tuned to different frequencies. Oh, this one was low pass instead of band pass. Like this. And we can crank the Q up. 
necessary. Down a bit. Like this. Brilliant. So um, is this kind of, where are we in the kind of development cycle? Are we kind of like there? Are we kind of ready to go? What's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the production already started and the Kunsa will be al available, let's say, late May or early in June at most. Okay. And uh, do we have a kind of final price? or? Yeah, it's going to be 840 euros, 840 euros, just like Fumana plus VAT. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming by. Thank <laughs> you.